You have a Mac running Mac OS, but you've been using Windows or Linux for such a long time. What do you do? What can you do with this machine? As you look down on this brush metal now in dread and confusion, you turn back to your old decrepit PC choking on the last breath as the dust bellows from its fan. So don't go back to that computer. Also, I might have gone a bit too far with the script writing on the first bit here, but uh, who cares? Anyway, as you might have known in the last, I don't know, three months or so, I got myself a Mac. Might be longer than that now. It might have been five months ago. Wow, this year's gone fast. Yeah, I got myself a Mac and I've been searching the internet for tons of tools to use because I like to get the most out of my Mac. And I'm going to share these tools with you to bring you from a new user of Mac OS to as close as we can get to being a pro user in such a short time span. We're going to jump into the deep end straight away. And I'm sorry, but I will show you how to make this way easier later on. But first, let's jump into I can install any app that I want in an instant. For example, uh, let's search for Firefox. I don't have it installed, so let's see if it's there. Yeah, Firefox is easily right there. And now I can install Firefox just by doing brew install Firefox as it installs other things because it's updating stuff. I should now have Firefox installed. Now Firefox is installed and there's a plane flying past. I'm going to close that window. That was easy. And it seems such a difficult thing to use at first, but all you got to do is go to brew.sh and there is this simple copy and paste install command that you can just do. I don't know if this is going to work because I already have it installed, but let's do it anyway. And once you have that installed, it will run these scripts and install everything. Uh, it is installing stuff. That's weird. That's updating brew for me. Once you actually run that script, there might be a little bit of code that you need to copy straight afterwards. Just read it and there should be a bit that's kind of not highlighted, but underneath some text. Copy and paste that. And now you've got brew installed. But I'm not a big fan of Terminal personally. Uh, I think it's the kind of weak app. So I installed another thing through Brew, in fact. I installed what was a great tool. And this is my second application recommendation. That's fun to say. I have uh, Warp already installed. And this is what I've been, you can see the fact that I installed Steam recently. Let's close that. This is probably the tool I spend quite a lot of time in now. And it's just a nicer looking terminal in the easiest way of putting it, but it has so many really useful tools. For example, if you're not into programming or very knowledgeable in that area, you can quickly ask it something because it has everyone's favorite at the moment, AI. I haven't used it that much, but every so often when I've typed a command wrong, let's do, let's spell brew wrong. Uh, install. Oh, wow. It gave me a recommendation of, did I mean that? And I did. And now we're uninstalling from Brew. This is just a great tool. I highly recommend going to go and grab Warp if you have the time. Customize it as well, because I have a lot of other utilities. And if you want to know about those utilities, please share this video with other people. Or do the thing I really hate asking to do, do the subscribe thingy. I know. It helps. The next thing I want to show you is another thing you can install for Brew because I've pretty much installed everything Brew and you might have seen it when I was opening up Warp itself. And this is Raycast. Raycast is great because it allows me to run commands from this and install applications. And the reason why I'm bringing it up is because I couldn't live without it. And the fact that, as I mentioned earlier, there's an easier way to use Brew. If you go to the store, store, uh, which is where you can get all these amazing tools, you can also get the brew tool. And instead of having to install through typing commands, which I prefer, but you may not, you can directly install from brew itself in this. Uh, by default, this isn't the same command as the spotlight, but you can do that in settings. And when you launch the app, it does give you a demo on how to do that. Uh, if you want a better example, uh, what do I do a lot with this? Probably my most used application inside of Raycast has to be the color picker, just because I do graphic design and it's just incredibly useful to be able to quickly grab the color of something and drop it into Photoshop. 
another little handy tool, uh, one of my, uh, maybe not most used, but one of, uh, gotta be up there, is over in this corner. I have, where is it? I actually forgotten what the icon is. Ah, here, this application. What this does is it automatically opens uh, certain links that I set in a different browser. I don't know about you, I have a quite a few browsers uh, because I have different ways of working in each browser. For example, I use DuckDuckGo at the moment, their own browser, for watching media because it's just easier and I don't have to worry about being tracked the whole time. Uh, plus, it kind of bypasses certain things on YouTube, like ads. But I also quite like the experience of using um, oh, Arc. Arc is great for what I do because it allows me to quickly swap between all my accounts and I have a lot of them. Uh, I can quickly be searching the internet, scrolling social media and then swipe over and now I'm doing press red work. That's why I have it set up like that. And then I have Safari, which is just there because every so often it opens up something in Safari and I have to deal with it. Uh, this tool has just made it a lot easier to force those applications open in specific areas. This tool has a difficult name to say. Um, I will try and say it. B E J I A That one. Um, and it's just a, an incredibly useful tool for that, uh, for multiple browsers. Second thing you may have noticed that my top bar looks very different. That's because of two widgets or two add-ons. First one is fairly simple. I, from the app store, you can get hidden bar. It's a paid for app, but I highly recommend it. And it just means that you, wait, is it paid for? I actually don't even know. I think I paid for this. I don't remember now. I have to search later. This is a, makes it a lot neater and only shows exactly what you need. I don't need all of these applications to be visible at all times, only every so often. So I can quickly close that down and that's it. The next tool I'm gonna recommend. Oh, actually also, if you want to have this weird bar, I don't know why I quite like it. It reminds me of older Mac OS, uh, the Mac OS I'm used to. So I installed a, um, what's it called? Another utility, lickable menu bar. It allows me to quickly change to an older style. I can go for a flat style, a matte style, all glossy from Mac OS. Is it Snow Leopard? Oh, I don't remember. This is what I've always kept running. I like it the most. Uh, I know it's a very visual thing. Many people probably don't like it, but I quite like it. The other tool I would have recommended, but I'm still going to mention it here, is Magnet. Another tool I paid for, but Apple has kind of fixed that problem. If we open up, no, if we open up Arc, no, this is what happens when you add too many. Let's open up Arc and we will quickly open up a Mastodon page and I don't know, let's click on the NASA one. This just allows me to quickly uh, bring up these two big windows here exactly like this because I like to quickly swap these all around and put them in full screen or in the two corners. Apple has recently released a feature to just snap stuff to corners or um, navigate around. This is great. I'm very happy that they've done that, but I still kind of like some of the features. Another tool I recommend, not really related to trying to be the best at using your Mac, but you may notice over here, I have a little tick and that keeps track of everything that I'm doing. You can see that I've got uni work to do. I've done that. I can take that and I'm currently doing that. This is just a really easy way to tick off your to-do list. It's Tick Tick. It's an app that I heard recommended from Marcus Brownlee originally. So I installed it and I've now got it on every device I've got because it's just so convenient to me and I can quickly tag things as what I need to get done. That's all the tools I've got to recommend. I don't know how long this recording was. 16 minutes. Well, we'll get that shorter. I hope you enjoyed finding more tools. I often just sit here trying new things as the kind of person I am. Uh, if you enjoy these type of videos, please leave a like and do all that stuff. But also I run a podcast I'm very happy about and would, uh, I think we're discussing, I've got to edit it actually today. I think we discussed 
new Apple leaks, the Tesla stuff, and camera shopping. So if you enjoy that kind of stuff, please go and give that a listen. Until the ne next time I bother to make a video, goodbye.